Four years, four years ago, Dallin came into uh, Canvasback's clinic, uh, came in the back way with a towel over his face. And that was when I first met this very special young man. When I came in, uh, he was sitting in the back, uh, uh, in the back of the house. Um, he was just sitting there with his head down, and uh, you know, I saw him, and, and immediately I felt a presence of warmth. Very, very, just a sweet kid. It didn't take long to fall in love with Dallin. It's pretty easy to do. And he just has this effect on people, and everyone wants to be around him. He has this uh, magical way of drawing people in without words. And I said, uh, let's do it. My concept was uh, different than, uh, than we currently uh, think of reconstruction. You know, when we try to reconstruct something from nil, it's, it's sculpting. You don't really know what you're going to end up with, and you're hoping it's going to end up good. Uh, and the idea here was to remove doubt and, and, and inject certainty. The way to do that is to actually have the final product as your first step. I found a company that's called Oxford Performance Materials, or OPM, uh, that deals with 3D printing of biological materials. Um, and basically, um, the back and forth uh, between OPM and myself were uh, on how we actually come up with uh, a final nose that was based on uh, Dallin's siblings and um, some um, sculpting and clay of models that uh, I did at home as well. So we scanned that all into a computer and then we started playing on the computer with how it's going to end up. Uh, our first surgery was a 17 hour long surgery so it was a really really long procedure in which uh, you know uh, uh, the great maneuvers of uh, setting in uh, uh, free tissue grafts and rotating tissues and creating the skeleton I mean those things are really really time consuming. I think that the, the ensuing uh, parts are going to be either procedures in the local anesthetic we can do in the office, uh, or certainly much shorter procedures. What was exciting to me was uh, coming to New York and having um, uh, meeting the people at Mount Sinai Hospital because they have graciously uh, provided the hospital services to do the surgery. Everything that I needed from materials and med medications and uh, the staff and unlimited uh, resources basically. I, I can't even uh, tell you how grateful I am because I mean uh, everything hinged upon you know, having the appropriate setup. One of the things that I think struck uh, Dr. Degan and me about Dallin is that even with his facial disfigurement, he had a drive and a desire to, to live a normal life. We're trying to um, help prepare him for going home because for the last four or five years, he has not gone to school. Um, and so we are looking for ways to um, provide him some tutoring so that he'll be able to integrate better when he, uh, into the school system when he gets back to the Marshall Islands. I think from a psychological standpoint, we've basically taken a kid who would have his head down all the time and just did not want anyone looking at his face uh, to a kid who uh, I see a kid is actually looking at me. In the beginning, Walking through the airports, Dallin uh, did a lot of walking behind me with his head down. As you can see, his head is up, and we just came back from playing basketball, walking the streets of New York, and uh, I really think it's coming along beautifully. What do you think? Standing up tall, walking next to me now, talking to people. What do you say? Tell us how you feel. How do you feel? What? Are you talking to the mic? Say, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> Are you excited to get back to Madro? Yeah. Yeah? Are you excited to see your friends? Family? Yeah, go back to school. Yeah. And, uh, 